Hi, welcome to Don's Menu Factory. Yeah, if you're peeking over my shoulder, you can see that uh, Betsy has color on her. Well, you'll have to wait for the next video for the critique of the paint job. But let's just say I'm living in Berryville. And like him, I will probably, let's go back to a happier time when I was prepping for the shoot. Uh, in this video, I'm just doing all the masking and prep and getting up, uh, getting ready to shoot the car. And uh, things don't always go as planned. Thought I'd show you a little bit of what I'm doing to mask the doors here. I take two inch wide, folding it in, well, basically thirds. So this is what I end up with is sticky tape with a non-sticky sort of more rigid piece so i've put that tape along the leading edge and stuck it to the door so this is what i end up with is this flap here that the wind can kind of blow you know the air will blow it a little bit but the idea is to just sort of minimize how much overspray i get blowing through to the inside but this is something that Barry did on Jade and I realized that this would work perfect for me so as you can see I ran the foam along the edge and when I close the door it seals it right up so you can see how I have this laid out uh, this is just Harbor Freight masking paper and I set it up so that I can just roll it across the windshield windshield opening there and catch the middle of that tape and just sort of tap it down and get it stuck and then it leaves a spot for another run of paper down below there and i just use my exacto knife and trim it up so here let's see if i can do this without messing it up yeah i know this is pretty basic guys but uh i might i thought i might as well show it you know, if the paper's a little longer than my arms, then I get it gets unwieldy and I can't handle it, so I fold it in half. It just makes it easier to handle, and I can kind of aim it the right way. And then uh, I only end up with one wrinkle in the middle. <laughs> oh boy, this paper is extra curly too. So yeah, I had to have extra stuff to a third hand there holding the end down. And once again, fold the paper. And you can use plastic, too, like uh, a lot of people do. But for this, it just didn't seem practical. At this point, I just use my X-Acto knife. Very carefully go around and trim the paper and not cut the masking tape. you got to be very diligent with this method. See what I'm doing here. Give me a, let's see if, I don't know if you can see that. But I fold it over so that I can see an exposed line of the masking tape and then I just crease the paper and then that gives me a really great line on the inside here I can just hold it tight and go right up the crease and I know I'm not cutting the tape and I get a nice clean nice clean line There, just like that. Now this bucket's too close. I'm going to have to trim that up. But in the meantime, I want to keep going here. So what I'm going to do is tape across all these edges, tape the creases. And of course, I have to mask up here along the line of the headliner. So I guess I'll start there. We'll just start with the headliner. And you can see that I reach in on the inside to back it up so that when I'm smushing the tape to the paper, I'm not pushing the back masking away.
and then I stick it down to the paper like so and it gives me a really good stable seal. And one last thing I can do, if I, if I get to where this paper seems to have too much flutter, like right here, so that when I'm painting it, the paint will dry, and the next time I go over it, it'll cause the paint to flake off and blow into the job. Well, what I can do is just take a length of tape, and I tape it to the inside get the loosest spot like right up here just like this I'm taping it to the inside of the paper and then pulling it down and taping it to the dash and the idea is then it cuts down on the flutter see just like that anyway that's about all I know about masking I'm not the expert so I'm actually copying a lot of Barry's ideas over on uh, Joe Daddy's Garage. Uh, I try to watch two painting videos a day from different people on the web. Uh, everybody does it slightly differently, and I'm trying to uh, glean enough information that I can then apply it to my own situation and come out on top of this thing, hopefully. So, as you can see, same technique here. I back masked underneath uh, the lip here because I need to put paint right there so I need to be able to get my gun uh, at least reasonably over the top here and get I suppose I could have made this more concave but I didn't it didn't work out that way but it taped up pretty well so everything's back masked and then I just lay the paper in and trim it uh, then go back and retape the edges, and I sort of had to redo the lock rod here. But it uh, everything's all done. Put extra pieces of foam in here just to stop the paint from going any further. I'm not worried about it going in down through this direction. I just kind of wanted to save the jams so that because the jams look really nice. Working along the underside, taping it down, doing the wheel wells. You know, but got the uh, sides, window openings done, and the back glass done, and of course the windshield opening done. And here's some shots of uh, Betsy all done. Well, actually, I don't have the paper taped to the floor yet, but you can see the front, how I did it. And Well, it's going okay. Got the front end done. Actually found some 220 scratch in the top of the hood right about there that I didn't get out before so that's kind of good so that's all gone uh, tops got done well just finished sanding all of the uh, I guess we call it sealer uh, anyway the uh, I sprayed it with sealer last night and it came out too rough so I guess my little booth here doesn't have enough ventilation to keep the overspray off the car so uh that means i will have to put on three coats of clear i will have to sand cut and buff it you know uh in order to get it to look decent now painting will happen tomorrow because i have to clean everything again the car the booth everything ah! uh, to start with i'll be shooting base inside the drip rail and I'm going to apply probably all three coats. Well, at least to, to where it's hiding properly. And along these areas here. And then I can just shoot base on the whole car. I just hope I can do it without screwing up. And tomorrow is the day. It's going to be a 70 degree day by, oh, I don't know, 5 in the afternoon. Uh, this morning... It was about 64 degrees at noon, so that's about when I'm going to start. This hose here will come in through the door, run behind this wall. I haven't put it in yet. Connect to this hose, which runs underneath the benches like that, and then makes its way around 
all the way to the other side. I start at the bottom here and then I paint over the top of the hood, down this side, then I do the door from the bottom up and taking it to oh, somewhere in here and then go up over the top and then pick up this door here, come back this way and do the whole quarter, then across the deck lid, the rest of this quarter and the back. And that, that's the order of things. So the idea is that uh, I'm not pulling the hose along with me where it wants to go underneath the car and rip the paper up off the floor, which I haven't taped down yet. Uh, I'll be backtracking on the hose the whole way around. So that's my idea of hose wrangling. So I'm not really uh, having to yank the hose along with me. Oh, more shots of... Betsy completed. This time it's all taped down. It's, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night and it's time to go in. Thanks for watching Don's Manufactory. I'll catch you later.